A lot of people ask me, when did I know that I was psychic? I've never not known. I have some of my earliest memories of being really aware of people's emotions, being aware of people's unexpressed thoughts, and seeing and hearing things that, that other people couldn't see or hear. And when I was a very little girl, that was so normal that I thought everyone was like that. And it was only when I started to speak about it that I realised that it wasn't. And that was actually very confronting for me. I was very psychic. I was very intuitive in a world that doesn't support or accept that very readily. And so I was ashamed of that, the way that, that many people who are homosexual may have been ashamed of being gay and, and feeling that they couldn't be truthful with other people without being judged. So that this intuitive and psychic aspect of myself was something that I secretly carried and, and really hoped but would go away so that I could just go and live an ordinary life like everyone else. And I certainly tried to. From my late teens, I started to suffer from all sorts of t terrible health problems. And the only thing that never stopped working was my psychic and intuitive ability. So I, I did this merry-go-round for a very long time where I would work in the corporate sector. And always in those periods, I turned to my psychic and intuitive work and I went on a spiritual journey trying to understand what was happening to me and to put it within a greater context. And finally, of course, the universe had the last laugh because the only thing that I could do was psychic and intuitive work. So the very thing that I had fought so hard not to be was the only thing that was left in, in my bag of tricks. The Chakra Wisdoms Retreat is a little different to some of my other retreats. This one's the first time I've run this particular retreat. So we'll move into this beautiful waning gibbous moon, which is also known as the Angel of Mercy Moon. And the Angel of Mercy Moon is about being able to sit in compassion with yourself, being able to sit in forgiveness with yourself, being able to self-reflect and look at who you are and what you've been through and to really hold a tender space in your heart for yourself and the decisions you've made and the mistakes you've made that, that are all helping you to learn and grow and unfold. So I, I've chosen that time very specifically because this particular retreat, the Chakra Wisdoms, we go on a shamanic journey through each of the chakras and how that energy makes us who we are and the choices that we make and the decisions that we make or have made. So it, it's very carefully orchestrated and I chose crystals for this retreat for each of the participants and they actually sat out under two moon cycles earlier in the year so that they could be filled up with that energy. I made a huge crystal grid out here on the farm. I put all the crystals in there. They'd already been chosen. So I'd gone through and sorted out my crystals almost six months before so that all of those things could be prepared and ready so that when they're given to the participants, I've chosen every single crystal specifically for that person. So if you were coming to my retreat, I would sit down and I would think about you, I'd hold you in meditation and then I'd think, what will best support you for your journey? Where I hold my retreats at Seng Surya in Byron Bay is such a special energy and it's really interesting. It's a purpose-built facility. It's magnificent. It is built on acreage on a ridge overlooking Byron Bay. We've got our own beautiful kitchen and dining room facilities. There's a great big hall where we work in and then all of these magnificent handmade quirky cottages that cocoon you in this lovely energy. We've got bird song and rainforest all around us, beautiful gardens and fresh air and this profound spiritual energy. And of course Byron Bay sits in an extinct 
volcano. There is obsidian and crystal all around us and energies that are about manifesting healing and change. So it's a very powerful space and it's internationally renowned for these energies of shift, of change, of healing, of self-growth. So it's the perfect place to bring people for them to have that experience. One of the things that retreat does that, that is really important is it gives you a space to be vulnerable and open and to just allow there to be time for reflection about who you really are, what you want, where you're going and what your talents and gifts might be. It's a beautiful time for self-exploration and also self-acceptance within an environment that truly helps you to become friends with other people who are on the same journey. And there's something very special about finding other people with common interests who will be supportive of you in that space and who'll understand that space in a way that people back out in, in the wider world might not understand. Seeing the amount of effort that Nicole put in, you know, doing the, the two, at least, you know, two weeks of meditation on each of us, it was, you know, and then when you arrive and then, you know, you get your goodie bag and there's all these amazing things that have been specifically chosen. Like I couldn't believe how Nicole had seriously tapped in and went, oh my gosh, that is so me. Dear Lou, welcome to the Chakra Wisdoms Retreat. I know that this journey will be a very special one for you. In my meditations, I have felt that deep, untapped possibility and that host of unexpressed gifts within you. It's time to reclaim those lost parts of you and reintegrate them into your whole, holding space for you to be all you came to this life to be. Nicole. that there was so much care and attention for almost like for your highest good you know to know that you're on the journey to, to recognize um, where you could be and I guess that was the the thing that Nicole just holds space for people to go you're here now well this is this is how you see yourself but I can see this so her ability to see that possibilities of what you can be when when you can't even see it yourself is incredibly powerful and heartwarming what does my day look like on retreat it probably looks a lot calmer on the surface than the way that it does from my end of my life so the first thing is I usually wake up just before four o'clock in the morning and I will sit up in bed. If it's cold, I wrap my prayer shawl around me. Um, or if it's a lovely balmy day, I might go and sit on the veranda overlooking the ocean in the quiet. And I take my mala beads with me and I settle myself into meditation. And I say um, prayers for my family. I say prayers for all of my students and my clients. And I say prayers for the world. And then I work my mala. So I tune into every single person on retreat. I check where they're at. I send them energy. I work with them at the level where they're at. And that might last. Go and sit quietly at my desk and I'll write my blog for the day and put that up so that's up at nice and early in the morning. After which, I'm not
Throughout, I guess, you know, today I've been thinking about the journey and it's really been interesting because, you know, there's been lots of opportunities to connect with others and feel their support. Um, to have Nicole guide us through so many different processes and meditations and just, um, gosh, the opportunity to really stop and reflect. And I think we, we don't have that opportunity in everyday life. So to actually do that consistently for five or six days, I don't know how many days it's been, five days, six days. Um, it's been such a gift to be able to give myself to really do that self-work that you would never otherwise do. One of the difficult things about waking up psychically, waking up intuitively, is it forces you to question your decisions and it forces you to question your choices because you can't sit in a space of opening to a greater understanding of yourself and at the same time lie to yourself about what's important, misrepresent yourself or your talents or your abilities out in the world, make decisions to make other people happy at your own expense. You just can't do it. So what I want to do on my courses, what I want to do on my retreats, what I want to do when I develop this relationship with you and bring you into my tribe is help you to accept this part of you that you don't know very well or that you might be frightened of or that, that you might have isolated so that you can come to a place of greater self-love, so that you don't sit in self-sabotage, so that you don't sit in struggle with yourself because that, that never works. And I also believe that the more of us who sit in our truth and who own that it is natural and human to be intuitive and to be psychic and to use those abilities to our best advantage, the more of us who can do that, the more we pave the way for everyone to become more accepting and to own these things in themselves and to accept these things in their children and their loved ones and their friends.